Hello, welcome to the show, 15 Minutes of Fame with Dawn Branch. I'd like to say thank you to my sponsors, TwinkletoesApparel.com in Georgia. These wonderful sandals that say Twinkle Toes, and they also have leotards and tights, all the wonderful accessories, even charcoal pouches that you can place into your dance bag. We have a new sponsor tonight, Spirit and the Word Ministries. My friend, Pastor Herrera, and his lovely wife, Minister Kim Herrera. They gave me this wonderful bag. Isn't it nice? So I'll put my dance stuff in here. Put my chaco. Look, Ooh, leotard. Is, well, I'm not wearing leotard, but you know what I mean. My dance stuff. Thank you, Spirit and the Word Ministries. And thank you for watching the show. Bye. Three, two, one. Here we go. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame, where we bring industry professionals into your home, where they share their secrets of their success and their journey. Tonight's guest is the one and only Miss Samaya McCray from New York City. Now she's in Vegas. <laughs> welcome. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be a part of this 15 Minutes of Fame, especially because, you know, fame is the alma mater, so, you know, that goes right on, right in line. I love it. I've been harassing her for at least a year, trying to get her. She's so busy, and we love being busy. So I honestly you too. That. You're working, girl. And look, we're twins. Look, we got the. <laughs> I love it. And guys, you're gonna just love um, all her videos. I can't wait to get to that part. She's an, a, a wonderful teacher. She's a mm -hmm. mentor. She's a choreographer, actress. You name it. Um, so I can't wait to introduce you and all of your work to our yes. Thank you. So my first question that I always ask is who is? So aside from all your accolades, working with Cher, mm -hmm. Juilliard graduate, I can go on and we will. Who is Samaya McCray? I am, first and foremost, um, I am just a bubbly human being. But, um, or I should say, and I love um, spirituality. I love um, nature. I love relationships with my friends and family. I am very loving in, in those relationships and that's, that fuels me. I enjoy uh, breaking things down, analyzing life, you know, figuring out why we're here. Um, I also enjoy mentoring and sharing gifts with, you know, whether it's friends, family, or my students. So I just find that, you know, for me, I just feel like I'm an ever evolving spirit. That's beautiful. Um, do you think that that was learned for you? Did someone feed into you for that? Or that's just innate for you? What do you think? I think it is a little bit of both. My mother is, um, has always been a spiritual and um, inquisitive poet. You know, she's always been the question, you know, uh, one of her poems was, what is this thing we call life? Hustle, bustle, struggle, and strife. Where does it come from or where does it end? Are we in control or at the mercy of the wind? And it goes on and on and on. Um, but I also remember distinctly as a little girl hearing the phrase, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that has stuck with me my entire life. And I felt that this is, this is how we as humans are to love and interact with one another. And above all else, these are the things that keep us connected, that keep us um, respecting each other, uplifting each other, caring for one another and being the best support systems and encouragement that we can. So if we can remember that, you know, how would we love to be treated? How would we want to feel in the presence of someone and give that. And um, I've, I've found that that's the best way to feel great, but also to make others feel great. So, wow. so rich, you are your Thank mother's you. child. Oh, I love it. Thank you. So speaking of your mom and her being in the arts and being a writer, a poet, was she also a dancer as well? 
No. She no. well, she does love to dance. Th don't get me wrong. She mm -hmm. does love to dance. And she did mm -hmm. want to go to Bernice Johnson, but she did not have the opportunity to. Although mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw this in. She did go to Cardoza High School with um with Carolyn. Oh, Mr. Moore, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh wow. So they were they were in school together. So she was on the dance team with her. But, you know, my mom was like, she was like, I was not trained. I never got to, you know, really explore that. But she was a martial artist and she was a very great martial artist. She went to her brown belt twice. <laughs> so, nice. Um, nice. yeah, so she's very physical, definitely. Okay, um, well, so. shout out to mom. Yeah. Um, born and raised in New York City, Queens. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that like at the time, at that time? Um, you know, I love New York, obviously, you know, it's home and it was a place of so many different types of kids as I was growing up, you know, I was introduced to different um, nationalities of kids, I was introduced to different, or I should say backgrounds, you know, we were all here in America, but, um, you know, I also went to a private school, but a lot of my kids, a lot of my friends at home went to public school. Mm -hmm. So I had two different lifestyles that I was le leading, if you will. So I wore, you know, I went to a Lutheran school. So I wore a, a uniform for eight years. There were only 15 people that graduated in my class and went in the eighth grade. So it was very small and contained. And then when I came home, you know, I had a different group of friends who, you know, we played double dutch and freeze tag and all these things that were just sort of like the neighborhood jewels of living in the neighborhood. And, um, and also that's where I was able to go to Bernie Johnson as well. So that was a whole in, another thing altogether. But, you know, right. being raised in New York, I think has given me um, a sense of community, a sense of big city yet small town living as well, because we were all so close, like everybody on my block, we would all, um, all the grandparents and parents would look out for each other. So we had a very strong knit community on our block. So we were never by ourselves, if that makes right. sense. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so, excuse me, this is making some noise. <laughs> but um, in any event, I, I, I found that um, it helped to shape me for being aware as well, because, you know, New York City is also filled with all different types of people doing different things. So, mm -hmm. you know, you do have to be uh, mindful and keep your head on a swivel, make sure that you are walking with your head up, making sure that you're with someone. And if you're not with someone, make sure that you're very aware at all times. So, you know, it definitely kept me on my toes as far as being safe as well yeah. as, you know, having a good time though. So I felt safe with my, with, with my block, you know, the, mm -hmm. where I was living. But at the same time, I knew not to be comfortable, if that makes sense. Right. I get mm -hmm. it. I get you. It yeah, also makes so. you um, just more of a well-rounded person. Yes. Just to say that, being aware. Yes. But you also have that dual side again with your mom and the Lutheran side. So, yes. Yeah. Were you the only child? Um, I am not the only child. I have a younger sister. I have an older sister and I have an older brother and I have a younger wow. brother. Oh. I have quite a, I have, I have a, I have a very large family actually of nice. siblings who we share, some of us share the same mother, some of us share the same father. Those mm -hmm. of us that, you know, have, um, we share, some of us share siblings without having the same mother or father. So like, you know, I consider my brothers, brothers, my brothers. So yeah. even though we're not necessarily blood related, we are yes. definitely blended That's, family. Oh my God. Are yes. you the only mm -hmm. dancer in your family? No. See? No. Okay. So go ahead. <laughs> no. So my older sister, her name is Ayadele Cassell. She is a world renowned tap dancer and choreographer. And she is at this moment. I had no idea that was your sister. I, yes. I totally know who she is. Didn't she yes. just get, uh, isn't she choreographing on Broadway? Or something? Yes, she's choreographing on Broadway right now. <laughs> yes, yes, she's choreographing Funny Girl. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. I know, it's, 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 a, it's so hard it to, never not. so it. many people, a lot of people do not know still, you know, some people, but, and some people have just figured out over the last, like, 
I want to say seven years, over the last seven years, they're like, wait, you two are really brother, I mean, really yeah, sisters? Yeah. Yes, we are. Like, and you know, we, we also know the same people um, separately. Mm -hmm. So that's partially why they don't, they didn't know because they knew me from, you know, doing what I'm doing as a dancer, you know, in concert world and, you know, ballet, modern jazz and everything like that. Um, but because of her being a tap dancer, you know, I, we just didn't collide in those ways. So I don't know. It, it's oh, it's wow. a very interesting thing. Cause then when people find out, they're always just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> right. She's yeah. beautiful and talented, just like yes. you. Yes, um, you. What about brothers? So Anyone my brothers dancing? are martial. Yeah. So they're wow. martial artists. They're martial artists as well. They are champion martial artists. They are also acrobats. They are um, capoeira teachers. Yes. Um, you know, they, they are extremely spiritual and physical and they are, they've been a part of the Ringling Brothers Barn and Bailey Circus. They um, started their own first black circus. Um, they, oh my goodness. No, so much, they so didn't much start history. the, the, the circ, what is that? The universal circus? That no, right. not the universal uh, circus. It was before that. Say. It was before Whoa. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what? it was before that. Mm -hmm. You had the whole family on 15 minutes yeah. a day. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm yes. so excited. See, yes. I, this yes. is why I don't do pre-interviews. <laughs> you see, I, but this shock is like totally real. Okay. <laughs> So at what point did your mom say, I'm not going to put Samaya in martial arts. I'm going to put her in dance. Like, what were you doing that made her say dance is for you and not martial arts? Interesting. Um, I was in kindergarten at my day daycare. It was kindergarten. Um, and they had an after school program and they had ballet and they had uh, gymnastics. Well, my mother got off of work at five. I got out of, out of school at three. So she couldn't make it until mm -hmm. 530 or six o'clock coming from Manhattan, you know. So, and I was in Queens. And so she said, well, let me just put her in this after school program. And they are, they'll teach her ballet. They'll teach her gymnastics. And, you know, I can come get her <laughs> after when, you know. So that's basically what happened. And I fell in love with it. My first show was Coppelia. And I had a Russian ballet teacher and I was just like, oh my gosh, I was, I don't, I wish I could remember because there were beautiful dancers, you know, I don't know where they came from. You know, I was in Forest Hills, so I don't know where these dancers came from. They were on point. I, obviously I was not, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but it was me and the other girls in my, in my class and some older girls as well who were dancing around. And I just was in awe. I was just in awe. I, I just mm -hmm. fell in love at that in at that exact moment. I'll never forget. I had my yellow costume with my tutu, and I had the little doll, the little thing in the back. It, we had we made it even. It was like this wind up thing that we made out of foil. Mm. Um, but it was absolutely breathtaking for me, and it was so inspiring. And it just you know when I got to first grade, so I left that school in kindergarten. That's they only went. It was only nursery and kindergarten. So when I went to first grade, I told my mom, well, I need to dance. This is, what am I going to do? Like, and so that's when she put me in Bernie Johnson. So I went right from there to Bernie Johnson. And then of course my whole world opened up. Because, Your whole, well, let's talk yeah. about that because for people who <laughs> yeah. do not understand the world of Bernie Johnson and at such a young age, you're yes. going to, you have to swim Thing. It is yes. like a factory, a Broadway mm -hmm. concert, TV production, yes, factory. So, yes. what was your first day like at your little tender age of what six or seven coming into this six, huge mm -hmm. building? Go ahead. I was again. My mind was blown because there were all these girls and boys too there were all, mm -hmm. all these children just running around and i just remember being like oh there was so <laughs> many so many more students than what was in my little class you know and i didn't know anyone um but then the, the range was again from you know the three to six babies all the way up you know until the adults and you know i just remember distinctly hearing different sounds on my first day i really do i remember hearing the tap dancers. I remember hearing the African drums. I remember hearing music like 
you know, ballet type music or just, you know, even if it was sort of a, you know, R&B or jazz-ish type of, you know, but it was just filled with sounds. I still remember even the, the feel of the air being thick with sweat, you know, and, you know, the moms everywhere and, you know, it was just like, it looked like a family, but like you said, a factory mm -hmm. at the same time, because it was so many children. There's mm -hmm. so many students and everybody was dancing down. Like, you know, there were just so many styles to, to take in, you know, I had just done ballet and then mm -hmm. now all of a sudden it was <laughs> like gang, gang African plan. jazz, like... modern, tap, right. you know, ballet it was everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was just really, really. So what was your favorite genre of dance at that time when you came I want to say, you know, I have, I didn't have a favorite. Okay. I loved it all. That's fair. Yep. I loved it all. I, okay, I did not teacher. have a favorite. Um, well, I, okay. I will say my favorite at first was ballet because I was accustomed to it. And my teacher was Aaron. Do you remember? <gasps> he was my first yeah. teacher. He was my first yeah. teacher. And I'll never forget. I stood there and, you know, I was so eager to just be like, to learn from him. And he was asking, you know, he was like, I'm going to show first position. And he showed it and I went right to it. And he was like, oh, like, you know this already. And then he was like, do you know second? So I did second. Do you know third, fourth, fifth? So we did all of that. And he was just like, oh my goodness. So um, shortly after that, he um, approached my mother and said, I want to put her in the super tats. And I was like, what does that mean? And she was like, he wants to move you up. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So that's how I got moved uh, midway through that year. He moved me, but it meant that he wasn't going to be my teacher. And that disappointed me. Um, but I had Lorna and I had um, Carolyn and um, Obadiah and Edgar sometimes as well and Derek for tap. And so, it, you know, I, I mean, I, but, but I, you know, he was my first, you know, right. Um, right. Connection. What a, uh, what a great connection to have. Yeah. 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 So yeah. as we talked briefly, um, I used to, I'm a lot older. Um, I would student teach for all of Aaron's classes. Yes. Um, so I'm going to ask you when you were um, a super tot, was that the year when Diana Ross's kids were there or this was, yes. Right. Yes. Right? Yes. I'm yes. telling you, BJ's was, we had Diana Ross's kids in your class so what was that like sharing did you be, did you friend them like befriend them what I mean like? no mm -mm, not Maybe. really because I was too afraid like I said I yeah. was I was one of the younger ones myself and another uh girl named Nicole we were the two youngest and I was honestly I was really shy I honestly was just like watching because everyone else even though like let's say let's say but at this point I was seven or eight mm -hmm. they were all 10 or 11 and they had more confidence. They had, they had been dancing longer. They were stronger, you know, yeah. they knew more people. So I was just trying to, and also I got moved in the middle of the year. So yes. again, I left any friends that I did make, I moved into, mm -hmm. and I just kind of, you know, just, yeah. I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to step on anyone, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, so I honestly, I kept to myself so much that mm -hmm. I did not really remember them because I, we were also told not to, you know, bombard them. You know, we, we were, not that we couldn't speak to them or anything like that, but just, you know, be, be respectful. Don't be yeah. like, what's it like to have Diana Ross as your mom? You know, <laughs> right, could I come, you know, could I spend that at your house? <laughs> right. That type of thing. You know, we, right, we right. were given etiquette, you know. At training. that early age, DJ was like, listen. <laughs> yes. Yes, we were oh, given wow. etiquette training. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it was very, so for me, it was, it was much more of just like, wow. It, right. You know, I was just more in awe of it mm -hmm. all. And even the same thing when um, Michael Peters came to reset, um, to set Thriller on, you know, I got to sit in on some of those rehearsals and I was again, blown away here. This is Michael Jackson's, you yeah. know, choreographer and, he was setting thriller on these students. I mean, what a what a time to be there. To what be, a time. 
to be able to just watch that happen. You know, I wanted to be in it, but I was too young, but that's okay. You know, it was yeah. just, it, it was, it was okay just for me to be able to see it. Yep. Just to be, just to yeah. be a witness, you know, to be yeah. in the room. And um, same thing with seeing um, Emmanuel Lewis and seeing Ben Vereen, you know, there was, star, there were stars constantly coming through or they would be at Lincoln Center speaking, yeah. you know, it was just, and it was just another day though, right? Yeah. It was just like yeah. another day. Yeah. yeah. It was always wow. someone. Yeah. So always someone coming in and helping. And that's the mm -hmm. give back. And that is what is so important. That's one of the things that BJ instilled in all of us, which you yes. have to give back. Right. Um, so what, that's just one thing. What else? We're going to move on. But what sure. else from BJ's as a teacher and as a performer? What lessons did you use from her training oh. that you use with your students? now oh yes okay so like you said we always had um students like yourself who were student teaching um who showed that while you were training yourself you were also learning another skill you were also helping and assisting you know the, the children coming up you know so you were taking on a leadership role and understanding that you know you are learning all aspects of being a performing artist i also you know, one of the things that really stuck out to me as well was even when uh, teachers, students would go professionally away, they would always come back and teach, you know, so it was a constant inspiration for the newest generation as well. And also to keep, I, I want to say to keep, just keep connected to your home, keep connected to your roots. Uh, second, or third, maybe. Um, so I'll never forget this as well. I used to go to the top of the stairs. And of course, you know, there was the sign at the top of the stairs that says, um, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I used to stand there in between classes and just stare at that, trying to figure out what that meant as a little girl, you know, trying to understand it's like practice doesn't make perfect. Okay, but I've heard that before, practice makes perfect but perfect practice makes perfect. So what does that mean? And I would contemplate that and then I would go to class and I would think about it, go home and figure out what that really meant. You know, I never really asked anyone because I thought it should be self-explanatory, right? But as my young mind, I was so curious as to what that means. And um, I tell my students the same thing because I found that what it meant was it's not just that you're practicing, but it's how you do things. Not that you are going to be perfect. However, you're doing everything that you can to become the best version of yourself. And within that, there's a little perfectionism. So we're going to show up on time. We're going to have our hair the right way. We're going to have the proper attire. We're going to apply corrections that we've already heard we're going to be open we're going to have a great attitude we're going to be full out all the time and so there's more and more and more it can continue on however you know I took that to mean your practice you need to take pride in that your practice needs to be approached with a level of perfectionism and professionalism you know not that it's going to be perfect every time we're human beings but um but that's the approach. So it's not lackadaisical ever. <laughs> so that's well said. I love that. Thank you. Thank and you. audience, wait till you see her kids later. It's exactly what she says exemplifies in their movements. And you'll see. Oh, thank you. You don't play. You. No. Um, okay, so you did the super tight. So I'm assuming you did the regular standards moving up, the little pro D yes. pro C. Okay. So it's Pretty much, if you're in a pro class at Bernie's Johnson, you have to audition for the high school of performing arts. Shout out, I got the shirt on. Yes! Right? Yes, PA. Yes, yes. So let's go there. So mm -hmm. who did your audition? What did you do it to? And do you remember who auditioned you in the class? I do not remember who auditioned me okay. at the studio, at the at at LaGuardia. I do, I mean, I don't remember who that was. I do remember seeing the older kids, you know, the student teachers and demonstrators. And I was in awe of their, okay. they were so pulled. <laughs> you know, they Walk were just so pulled. Mm -hmm. 
Right. They were right. full. They were strong. <laughs> they were just that, beautiful. All, yes. All the adjectives. Okay. Yes. So who did your um, choreography and what did you do? So, uh, you know, I did my own choreography. Oh, okay. I did my Why own choreography. Why are you going to make me... <laughs> <laughs> I did my own choreography. Is that a good thing or a bad yes, thing? Yes, I mean, I think so. I think so at this point. Yes, I, I, no, no, it definitely is. It definitely is my, my it, it definitely is. Um, I stayed up all night long the night before choreographing because I just wanted, I don't know why I was so determined to, I danced to Janet Jackson. To, my girl. Um, mm -hmm. To black cat oh wow okay did bj approve this i'm just gonna <laughs> say it. This, sound, this does not sound like a bj approved dance this is this 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 <laughs> this, this, this 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 highlights a little of my um independence i will admit this highlights a little of my independence and i you know i'm not sure oh, this is what i can say is that I felt a need to, I felt a need to do my own thing. That's all I remember is that I felt that I needed to express myself my way. And so I choreographed this little number to, and it was ballet, but it was to Janet Jackson. <laughs> so, okay. um, so it just kind of showed the, the beginning of contemporary ballet. I guess so. Yes. <laughs> For me. <laughs> yes, For you. yes, yes, yes. So, um, and and I I really, you know, I I don't know. I, I know one thing. I was very nervous, but I felt that this helped me to calm down. That I was doing choreography that felt comfortable to me, that I was able to express myself the way I wanted to. And when I was able, when I auditioned. I, I felt like I did okay, but I really didn't. I was very, like I said, I was really very shy. And I was very judgmental of myself. So when I left the um, audition, I went downstairs and I met with my mom and I started crying and I was like, I don't know if I got in. You know, like I don't know if I made a mistake by doing my own thing and this, you know, that whole thing. Um, and one of the demonstrators came downstairs and she came off the elevator and she saw me and she ran over to me and she said you were amazing. You were so great. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to see you here. This is, and I was just like, what? <laughs> awesome. I was so blown away. She was like, you were beautiful. And my mother was like, thank you for telling her this because she's like falling apart, you know? Yeah. And it made me feel better, but I did not necessarily trust that because she was a student, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, what do I, you know, I don't know. So it, I was on pins and needles until I got the acceptance letter um and I'll never forget my principal came to my classroom at my private school and he knocked on the door and he was like get in here and I thought I was in trouble and then he said your letter came in from LaGuardia and I was just like <gasps> yeah he was like he's looking at it and he's giving me the evil eye kind of like I don't know what you're gonna do with your life because you didn't get in here <laughs> oh, no. he was a big jokester and then yeah. he was like just kidding you got in you know so, you know, I've, like I said, I've known him since I was a freshman. So I'm now being, I mean, I'm in first grade. So now mm -hmm. I was in eighth grade. And uh, so we had a very special relationship, you know, the whole school. So it was right. really sweet that he gave me oh. that information. Yeah. And so you made it into the big school. So you started in LaGuardia. So you weren't at the old, okay. Yeah, yes. I started at LaGuardia. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so then, then your technical life begins right ballet yes. every day monday yes. and friday it also yes. states that you were a scholarship student at the alvin Ailey american dance center correct okay so talk about that and why al why alvin Ailey and not like dance the parlor or the graham school so why did you pick Ailey? so Ailey was um coming to laguardia to audition kids for their summer program. No and way. They didn't do that back in those my day. Back in my they, day. Okay. They 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 came to the school or they gave us they were coming to the school and they um were doing an audition 
for certain kids. And then they also had, they were holding an audition. So um, when I got the letter for, you know, when the audition was, I was like, I'm going. Cause this, this was, this was Alvin Ailey. It was like, sure. you know, and of course mm -hmm. our teachers at LaGuardia were saying, this is what, you know, they were encouraging us to, to do okay, that. Okay, shout out to the teachers. Who, yes. who were your teachers when you were there? So my teachers were Penny Frank, ah. Deborah Zoll, uh, Elisa King, yeah. um, Michelle Benash, yeah, she's um, Brunil, Brunilda Ruiz, yes. and Joey Smith, Eddie okay. Shellman. Um, trying to think if there were any others that, so, oh, and Joe Lanteri. Okay. Shout yes. out. To, I love giving flowers. Yes, Without them, yes. we would not be and who we are today. Yeah. Oh, oh my so. goodness. Those 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 are those mm -hmm. are my rocks. And of course, Michelle Mathesius. So as the, the director <laughs> of the dance mm -hmm. Sorry, I will smile. Yes. Shout out yes. to yes. 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 yes, 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 yes. Um, you know, they the all of my teachers really, really were a huge impact on me and how just everything just everything they they shaped me they nice. shaped me and so I'm really grateful so they so they encouraged me to audition for Alvin Ailey and I did and I got into the uh the children's division I was too young to go right away into it. so I was still in this I was in the children's division at first and then I was able to move once I got a little bit older I think I had to be 15 or something I'm not sure yeah or 16 I don't remember I think it was 15 and um then I ended up moving into the I guess older division so um but I you know I studied at Ailey after school so when I got out of school so I took our two classes at LaGuardia and then I would do our academics and then I would run <laughs> run down the stairs up the block down the elevator I mean down the hill and up the s up the steps you know to rush into a to either a modern class, a Graham class, a Horton class, or a um, ballet class, and sometimes both, depending on the day, mm -hmm. the week, the day of the week, and um, or even a jazz class. So it was it was a lot of dancing happening, a lot of training that yeah. was being you know. Now, were you still with BJ's at the same time? So I was still with BJ's until I was a sophomore. Okay. Until All I was right. a sophomore. By the time I got a soft, but when I became a sophomore, like midway through, I wasn't able to do everything anymore. Like mm -hmm. I was going to school, I was going to Ailey, and I was trying to go to BJ's, and I was just burnt. It's a lot. I did, you still got homework to do, right? And you know, LaGuardia. I was in Queens still, and so LaGuardia was three trains and a bus away from me. So, mm -hmm. and I was getting up in the morning at five a.m. I was leaving at or 5.30, and I was leaving my house at 6.30 to get to school by 8.10. We had ballet at 8.10 or Graham at 8.10. You need to be sitting with the soles of your feet together <laughs> by 8.10. Leotard tights on, yes. You know. Okay. So, so that's class good to started. know. That's mm -hmm. good to know. But again, this is a training yeah. platform, and mm -hmm. you, it's, it's like a job. So yes. these dancers now, like, I'm, you're in Vegas now. Mm -hmm. it's, a whole, it's a little different. Today. um public transportation they probably don't do that as much i'm in no. orlando there's really no we were no. up like you said 5 30 on the floor leotard and tight so feet together 8 10 yes. until three class at ailey four o'clock or 4 30 and three at least three oh five three oh and then i was three oh five and that then i was done at six and then i would get home by seven thirty. so I didn't have a whole lot of time after that. So, you know, once that, once I got home, it was eat, do some homework and go to bed right, and get so up and do it Let's talk about curriculum. Yeah. Um, so at LaGuardia, they, did, they didn't teach Horton when I was there at PA. So what was the right. curriculum for you at PA? And you already discussed you did Graham and Horton. And then I want to talk about your, the length of time that you did for your studies, hours, in comparison to what is kids are doing today at a dance studio. And, mm. and I want to talk about the importance of that. So 
at LaGuardia, our curriculum was ballet and gram exclusively at that time. We had jazz as an elective, or not as an elective, but like we had jazz uh, once in a while. And then we had um, dance history. We had anatomy. Mm, trying to remember what other things. That was pretty much, that was, that much was it. it. We had points, of course, you know, we had our- we Now, had were points. you a ballet major, modern major? Um, I consider oh, myself didn't have all of that it. Maybe. Okay. It, yeah. We were well. So I was in. I was in the, what they call the, the I guess the second level of ballet and modern. So, we okay. were on the. I guess what you call more advanced classes, but I mean, you know. Okay. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm just. I'm just saying. You know, we had two levels, and so I was in the higher level in both mm -hmm. ballet and modern. So we, we didn't treat them as I'm a ballet major or a modern major. When you were in ballet, you were a ballet major. When you were in mo modern, you were a modern major. There was no, okay. you know, and, mm -hmm. it, and, it, and it, was, it was really treated that way in a sense that it was, it was very, you know, you didn't have the option to be like, well, I don't really do that, you know. <laughs> right. Okay. You're doing all this. You're doing all Let's this. Let's talk about the length of time for each class. So they took modern just as serious as ballet. What was the standard yes. length of a day's class? I want to say our classes were an hour and maybe 15 minutes. Yeah, I was going to say about an hour, 15 minutes. Or, or hour okay. 20, maybe an hour and 20. Okay. Maybe an hour and 20. It wasn't that quite an hour and a half because you had to change you know, to get ready for your next class. Okay, but that was pretty much how you did it for four years, an hour and change. Okay, yes. now you go to Ailey. But that's per class. That's per class, I get it, mm -hmm. I get it. Um, now you go to Ailey, about how many hours for a ballet class at Ailey or a Horton class at Ailey? An hour and a half. Hour and a half, okay, good. Hour and a half. So here we go. Today's world, like in today's world, in dance studios, you get an hour. So um, this is a teaching platform. Um, yes. Any advice for young teachers out there or students who, um, how to structure their class to get in all the meat, everything you need in an hour? Well, I am a big proponent of warming up. I'm a big proponent of being prepared. I speak about that with my students all the time. Preparation is everything. So especially now you don't have that extra 30 minutes and that's a long time to be taken away as far as I'm concerned. So um, what you can do to maximize your time in class is to be prepared more. You should be warming up or warmed up before you get there so that when you are in your class, you can get the maximum amount of information and muscle conditioning as possible because you don't have a half an hour to warm up with your teacher, maybe. You know, your teacher may not be able, or even a half an hour of just information, education, just, just to speak to them and say, this is how this is done. You know, it can take 15 to 20 minutes sometimes just to explain something so that there's an actual understanding of what's being taught and not just thrown at you as if you're supposed to understand that physically when your bodies are just growing as well in the midst of it all. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think preparation okay. for me, I think is, pre is preparing yourself, warming up, getting exercises that can assist you at this point in time, you know, learning how to uh, maximize your, your abdominal muscles, you know, your glutes, your hamstrings, your ankles, you know, these are, these are things that you've got to do on your own because, you know, if you don't have an, that extra half an hour to warm up with your teacher, you, you, you might miss out on quite a bit of training. So that's Thank something you that you have to, you know, I think you got to be proactive and responsible. And responsible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now you're a senior in high school. Yes. You can go to college yes. or you can go in these streets, <laughs> in the streets, <laughs> right? And start gigging and working and hustling and bustling even more. 
What was your choice? What was your decision? And where did you go? And all of that. So I'm going to bring this back. I, my, um, so I, I always wanted to go to college. That was, that was just one of the things that, you know, when I was a, when I was a little kid, I remember being somebody asking me in the sixth grade if I was going to college. And I said, of course. And so that was just, that's, that was what was going to happen. Going where to college was another thing. And if I was going to dance, I didn't know. You know, I, I was taking dance very seriously. And I was around, obviously, being at Ailey in particular, and also through Bernice Johnson, seeing what's possible. I still was very shy and still kind of like, I don't know if I could do it, though. You know, I still had a little bit of um, insecurity in that level, in that way. However, I loved it. And I, it, you know, I knew that I wanted to. Anyway, um, but I had made the decision once, you know, I, I was I was going to, I'm just going to quickly go back to when I auditioned for Ailey because my mother, I told my mom, I was like, I'm not going to audition. I'm too afraid. She was like, what? And I was like, I don't think, I don't think I can do it. She, I was like, what if I don't get in? She was like, but well, what if you do? And I was like, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't want to put myself out there like that. And um, I said, well, you know, maybe I'll just become a doctor or a dentist or something like that. And she was like, you think that's easier? Like, you know, right. what the heck? Right. And so I said, <laughs> you know, it, well, I don't know if it's easier, but I don't care about it as much, I guess, you know, my, in my heart, mm. right? Um, and so anyway, she said, all right, well, what would you do? She said, if everything worked out the most beautiful way, if you had nothing to worry about, your money was there, you could have any job you wanted, you could, um, you always had money in your pocket and you were, you know, what would you do? What, what would you choose? And I was like, oh, well, I would dance. And she said, okay, well, grab your bag. Let's go. We're going to this audition. <laughs> so, oh, we so that, love mom. Yeah, so that solidified things for me in that moment. And so then I knew, okay, I know I, that I do want to become a professional. So it really did steer me in that direction. So fast forward to, but going to college, uh, Roger, actually, Roger Jeffrey had gotten into Juilliard. And he has always been one of my greatest friends and also um, a, like a mentor to me. And even though he's only a couple of years older, but still, he, you know, he's just very giving me advice. Yeah, <laughs> you know? shout out to and Roger. And that's out. how I actually found out about you. So shout out to yes. Roger for the connection. Yes, 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 yes. I'm trying to get him on the show, but he won't. And you know, yes. he's busy, boo. <laughs> I know, he's about he's to busy. become a doctor. He ain't thinking yes. about me. <laughs> right, right, right. And he said to me, he said, I want you to, um, I want you to audition for Julia. And I was like, what? And he was like, I do. And he was like, I, I think you should, you know, I think this will be good for you. And I was like, Roger, Julia. <laughs> like, it just was like, are you kidding me? You know, that just seemed like the biggest mountain. And he said, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know. He's like, come see the performance. I'm performing in the winter showcase. Come, come see this performance. I said, okay. So I go, I remember walking into the theater and it looks like Noah's Ark and there's wood everywhere. And I was just like, oh my goodness, this <laughs> is gorgeous. But it's something comforting about it. It was like, it just felt like I felt right at home. And I was just like, oh my goodness. Okay. This is interesting. So anyway, I sat down and I remember um, he was in Paul Taylor's Esplanade. Um, I want to say there was a Twilight Tharp piece, and I don't remember the other one at the moment. I don't remember. I, but I remember watching him and all of the other dancers and going, I have to be here. I have to be here. This is, this Excellent. is it. And you were like, it was right. And with you being so spiritually con connected and you knowing and with nature and the whole wood, yes. you were like, oh, yeah. this is me. This is me. Yeah. This is me. Mm -hmm. This was, it was, it was all me. They were dancing and sliding and turning and jumping and, you know, Janet and Jackson was dancing in the back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was, you know, it was a whole thing. I was yeah. just, I was blown away. I was blown away. And so then I said, yeah okay, I definitely am interested. I, I felt like this was my calling. And then right. and, um, Miss Mathesius actually also 
set me in to have um, conversations about what I was going to do mm -hmm. and, you know, what was, what was my um, thoughts about college. So anyway, she basically also, you know, any of the, any colleges that I had on the list, she was like, yeah, no, you're going to audition for Julia. <laughs> oh, I love like, it. Okay. So she was, she was also very much, you know, like, cause I, I did get, even though I wanted it, like I said, I had my own insecurities. So I was still kind of shy about, you know, being assertive about it. And um, so anyway, so she, she definitely was like, nope, this is what you're going to do. I was like, okay, dokie. So, it. you know, you have to, you have to apply for this. So uh, we did the Young Arts mm -hmm. that, um, well, we did Young Arts right before I knew about that at all. Okay. Really. So I have to ask um, you. Did you, Say that again. You broke up just a little bit. I have bit. to ask you about Young Art. Um, did you choreograph your own piece for Young Art, or did you ask for help? No, <laughs> no. So I had put that. That was the end of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. That was that was the end of that. Um, but um, because I, you know, that made me so nervous. I don't know. I I don't know. But I was pretty bold in the eighth grade there for some reason. Anyway um no uh elisa king choreographed my my Thank solo you. yeah yeah <laughs> elisa king choreographed my solo for that and then let me think did i have two solos i feel like i had two i you may have had, had to do modern and jazz or modern and about you had yeah to do like two. or two something like that i want to say um i think i wanted i think i want to say I did Elisa King and Penny Frank, both of them. Oh my God, you had both of them, that's awesome. We, we were able to fly to Florida to experience this weekend or week long, I don't even remember now, but it just felt like so much time. And um, it, it was just incredible. Reginald Yates was there. Um, uh, Maria Grandi was there. She's, she's okay. passed on now, but, and um, Denise Jefferson was there who was also passed on um yeah. rest in peace to these legends and yes. um and uh flowers always mm -hmm. donald, and donald McHale. wow yes. heavy hitters in the house mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. you did that mm -hmm. yes did that how did we did do that. i i got some money <laughs> <laughs> i got some money okay. um i believe I, if i remember correctly i believe i came in third so yes. um, I think I think I came in third, and then um, uh, we came back to New York. We flew back to New York, and I auditioned for um, Juilliard. And to this day, that's still one of the hardest auditions I've ever done. Okay, talk about it. So I'm not sure if it was so much. It, okay, it was a mixture of everything because of it being the Juilliard school, obviously there was just this pressure of that, um, knowing that a lot of students and dancers were coming from around the world to audition. I felt that way about LaGuardia, but this also felt like it took it to another level because now we're older. So now we have to be even right. more. Like this is it. This, this is, is it. it. This is it. And I had just come back from Young Arts. So I had been around some of the most amazing artists in the country. So I knew that, shoot, these right. people out here is dancing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So um, when I got there, you know, and it's, and it's, you know, it's an extremely, it's an institution. So, you know, it's much more professional, you know, LaGuardia is a high school, so it, still had a very youthful energy. When you go to Juilliard, it's very mature. It's, you know, you have graduate students there, you know, you have master mm -hmm. students there, you have international students there who are coming for a specific international program. They have a certificate program. You know, there are, um, I mean, there's just so many, uh, there's the, the Juilliard uh, Philharmonic or Symphony rather is there. You know, there's so many, it's it's just it's just a different um, energy, and so that was intimidating. And then getting into the room, and you know, it just was the best room you've ever seen in your life. First yeah. of all, right? Yeah, like, yeah. you've arrived. 
and oh, then. You, and then you know the same the, with the with the Juilliard um, students who were demonstrating. I mean, now now yeah. I was in awe, yeah. in awe. Like this is what's possible. This is what's possible. Like you talk about, I th- and I felt like we had gotten top notch, you know, training at LaGuardia. I know we did. You know, yeah. and then seeing these these dancers was, you know, was beyond inspiring. So um, I was, you know, really like, let me get on my P's and Q's and do what I got to do. So, and we had a full ballet class. It was a full okay, class. Okay, so not just full a- class. Do they cut in the, in between or they let you do the whole class? So they, they let you do the whole class. So you weren't getting cut in the middle. You, didn't, you weren't at the bar and didn't get the, okay. Mm-mm, no, no. No, they wanted to see everything. They wanted to see everything. And I mean, we did warm up to plie. I mean, we did a whole hour and a half class. And so then anyway, that was over. When that was over, then they did a break. They said, you can go to lunch. And when you come back, there will be a list up that says who gets to stay and who can leave. Thank you very much. Oh, so okay. that was a little bit stressful because they're not giving you an opportunity to see both sides of you. They just wanted to see ballet. Right. Oh, let's let's stop right there real quick. As a teacher, mm-hmm. let's talk about the importance of technique and ballet. Now, I'll let you explain it. I'll keep, I'll, I'm not going to say anything. How important mm-hmm. is ballet in dance world, in the dance world? In any kind of genre, go. It's imperative. <laughs> it's not important. It's imperative. <laughs> it's imperative. It's imperative. It is imperative. It's imperative. If you're looking for, you know, you, 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 I think what people misunderstand is that you do not have to become a ballet dancer in a dance, in a ballet company in order to reap the benefits of the technique of ballet and the artistry of ballet and the discipline of ballet and the conditioning of ballet and the flexibility of ballet and the balance of ballet and the, I mean, I could go on, you know, and the use of the head and the use of the arms and the use of the feet, the articulation, the, you know, there's just so many elements that it informs the coordination, that it informs the body in such a way that you would be remiss to miss it, <laughs> to, to leave it out of your vocabulary and you, out of your curriculum. It really, it's not, you know, you, you do not have to become a professional if it's not- You don't not, have to you like know, it. But you you don't have, have to like to do it, it. <laughs> but you better learn to love it. You don't have to like it. Right. But you Thank better you learn to that. love it. Yeah. Because, because it, 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 it's a cleaner. It's like, it's, it's, it trims away all of the unnecessary movements, all of the unnecessary uh, technique that is kind of can get muddled or, you know, it, it, it allows you to get, it's very efficient. It's it efficient. allows you to rest in the movement yes because baby if you ain't on that leg right you You know yeah you can rest you can trust you can trust your Mm -hmm. your technique so that you can let your artistry fly so that you you know it's it's really it you know things become easier actually when your technique is stronger so you know you have the freedom to do so much more and like you said, it, it allows you the chance to sort of suspend your, your thinking so hard mm-hmm. and really be able to express your artistry. Yeah. So, you know, it makes movement, it makes you movement that easier. Student? Ballet, 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 ballet. Okay, ballet, so ballet, ballet. you come back, you see your name, you're like, oh, wow. Okay, what's next? So what's next was modern. And we did a full class of a mixture of Graham and a mixture of Taylor. Okay. We may have even done a little sh- snippet of Lamon. Okay. Now, at this but, point, were you familiar with those two vocabularies? Because you've only mentioned Graham and Horton. Okay. 
So now you're like, what is this? Yeah, uh, did not. And I, I was not familiar with either of those as a as a as a real technique. I was familiar with some of the exercises, actually, because okay. some of them, you know, because Taylor and Graham and uh, yep. Lester mm -hmm. Horton, they all kind of. Yeah they complement each other in a way they mm -hmm. come from, they have similar exercises. So some of the things I have done, and even at BJ's, you know, some people, you know, they sort of do certain, you know, drop swing type right. stuff that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that you'll find in Taylor. And so I was sort of, I had seen some of it or it seemed sort of familiar, but I, I wasn't versed in it at all. And, um, but I, but I enjoyed it but I really okay. liked it. And, okay. you know, it, I felt, I felt comfortable. It wasn't, it didn't make, I didn't feel out of place. Okay. Good. So I had a really great, um, really great time in class, in that class. And then we had to do our solos. So, and if I remember correctly, I had to do both solos for that. So that was another, that was another reason. So you why did two was... Martin solos or you did, oh, okay. Oh, you, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Wow, they were totally that's different. a long audition, all in one day. Yes, yes. That's why I said it was it was the one of the hardest ones I've ever done because it was all in one day and that anxiety and you know pressure. Now, are other people in the class while you're doing your solos, so they're watching. Oh. No, I don't. Okay. No, no. We came in one at a time, mm -hmm. but the panel was there. Of sure. Course. Okay. And the the student demonstrators were there as well. So, and who came running to you after class? Did they come chasing after you this time? Oh, not this time. Were you not waiting? This time. You were like at the elevator or maybe somebody? Yeah, no, nobody, no one, no one came running that time. But um, but it was it was definitely, you know, I, it was a relief when it was over. And, you know, I'm I I made it through the day because I did feel good about the day, I, but it was very exhausting and it was really mentally um draining. You know, that's question. How. because you went to Ailey and because you went mm -hmm. to LaGuardia, the panel, were you familiar with any of the teachers? Because sometimes they would have guest artists. Okay, so talk about, let's talk about auditions and how sometimes it's not about what you do, but who you know. Just Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I, oh, I tell my students this all the time. The world runs on a lot of who you know. Do not get comfortable with that just because you know someone. So because it is who you know, but what they think of you. So oh, you better say that. Ooh. Who you know, but what they think of you. So you have to be mindful, and this goes back to treat others as you would like to be treated, but also practice doesn't make perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect. So how you show up is really important. And so when I was at, at Juilliard, the um, Maria Grandi was on the panel. I didn't know that until I walked in the room and she was one of the teachers or she was on the panel. And I was just like, oh, I just saw her. But that didn't make me feel better. <laughs> okay, okay. That didn't make me feel better. It made me feel better to a degree, but I, I didn't feel like, oh, she's gonna let me get in here. Right. You know, um, right. I, you know, I just, I just felt like I have now I felt more pressure that mm. someone is in here that I know. And now I really have to, cause if she says, oh, I know her from young arts <laughs> now, right. what you, what you got girl? Right. right. Let's see. You know what I mean? So to mm -hmm. me, it was almost like, oh gosh, now I got to really, like, I got to prove, even though I was planning and, to. And and let me piggyback on that too, yes. because what's interesting about that is you just did both of those solos in Florida, right? Yes. Now yes. you're back in New York, Pat, right? So what is the pressure of that? Like, you know, right? I, like, it was, it was, it was all very, like, I tell you the honest truth. It was, my senior year was a very pressure. I guess I'm going to ask you, did you feel obligated to make it look different? I guess that's the point I was trying to make. Oh, so that yes. didn't look like, right. Like I just like, right. I haven't grown with it. Right, in a week. Correct, <laughs> correct, <laughs> correct. Yeah, yeah. You gotta you know? grow. So how mm -hmm. are you gonna make this one look different? I just saw you do it to yesterday. 
What you got mm -hmm. for me today? What okay. you got for me today? And that goes back to homework and preparation and staying present with your work because, you know, we can often think that we got, that we have something, that we have it under our belt that, you know, oh, I know how to do this solo, you know, but there's so much to uncover. There's so much to, you know, peel back more layers and to express deeper parts of you. Now I'm a different person though. Now, after being down in Florida, aren't I? I had not been to Florida before on my own, you know, taking dance classes with these world renowned um, teachers and choreographers and, you know, being on this sort of world stage, if you will, for dancers. So now I'm a, I'm a new, I'm a new artist today because I have different experience now. Yeah. So what does that, and how does that inform my solo? You know, and that was up to me to make it different. But this is what I'm going to give credit to my teachers at LaGuardia who were especially Elisa King because she was consistent with us in performance. And we took class as though we were performing. She would pull the curtains. We had, we had like a mock theater in our, in our uh, modern room, one of the modern rooms. So she would pull the curtains in as if we were on stage. She would dim the lights. We had two huge like Licos or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. from each corner spotlights. And she would put those on, she would dim those fluorescent lights. And we would start with the bounces and we would continue on through the pretzel seamlessly as if we were on stage. Nice. And, you know, and she was, and she would dance with us. So we were able to witness this passion, this commitment, this discipline, this love, this knowledge all in front of us and it was inspiring because she wasn't I a still kid. sing because of her when yeah. I teach. you're right yes. just the joy of the movement that mm -hmm. came from her mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. all right so now you're doing yeah. that you're in you obviously get accepted thank you for that walk because this yes. is going to help someone okay. know that no. each time you do a solo it could be different that's right each time make it a little bit and I shouldn't say that because I know the choreographer is going to go, don't change my choreography. But it's not about changing the choreography. It's just changing. How do you want to say it? What do you want to yes. put? Changing the emotion possibly. Mm -hmm. Holding mm -hmm. something just a little bit longer. Okay, students? Yes, it's the nuances of it. I want to talk about competition.